Welcome, and in this lesson, we are going to be looking at the editor that I'm going to be using within the course, as well as the browser that I'm going to be using within the course. Now, for the editor, if you already have an editor that you're using and you're comfortable with using that, you can go ahead and continue to use that. And if you're looking to check out something new or to check out what I'm going to be using within the course, that's available at Atom.io. So this is Atom. It's an open source editor. It's available across platforms. Uh, so you can go to download the correct version for the platform you're using and install it if you're interested in checking out Atom. And it is a really good editor, very flexible, and has a lot of options that come built into it. I'll just give you a brief overview of Atom. So you've got some options here as for settings. In the settings, you've got your core settings, editor system, key bindings, packages. So packages are really useful uh, if you need to get something done quickly or to automate something. Uh, it's a great uh, it's a great way, such as the code beautifiers and so on. Uh, so these are all available as packages and you could simply search out the package that you're looking for and see which packages are available. Uh, so there's uh, a JavaScript one as well. Uh, there's also, also themes so you can load in new themes or you can use the default themes. Right now I'm going to be using Atom Dark uh, so that's going to be for the editing part uh, within the editor so that's why it's going to be a dark background and light text. So the other thing, the other resource that we need in order to render out JavaScript is a browser. So for this, for this next set of lessons, I am going to be using Chrome and Chrome is a free browser and I'm sure you've heard of Chrome and you probably already have Chrome installed on your system, but in case you don't, it's available for download at google.com chrome forward slash browser. And the reason that we're using it is because it's one of the more modern browsers. Uh, usually a lot of the stuff is up to date and it's just, um, it's also got a really great resource where it's got the dev tools. Uh, so in order to open up dev tools, you can go to any, open up Chrome and on a Windows machine, it's Control Shift I, on a Mac, it's Command Opt I. And what this does is this opens up these, uh, this console here and within the console, so you've got elements, you've got your HTML, you've got your CSS, and then within console, you can write some JavaScript and have it rendered out right within your page. So really great resource, and we're also gonna be using our console within Chrome for debugging, passing messages from the code into our browser and back and forth. So it's gonna be a really useful tool for development of our JavaScript coding. So next lesson, let's jump right into writing some JavaScript. And I'll show you how to do that coming up. Welcome back. And in this lesson, I'm going to show you where you can add JavaScript within your page. So the first place that we can add JavaScript is within our HTML as an attribute. So we can add the on click and have our JavaScript within here and then uh, the rest would just be HTML. We can also add it as a tag, so script tag opening, have our JavaScript in there and then closing the script tag. And then lastly, we can add it as a link to a source file, which is a JS file, so this is a JavaScript file. So let's open up our editor and let me show you how we can add all of these different ways, uh, all of these different ways of adding JavaScript. So the first one, we're just simply adding into the attribute. So we've got this function here uh, where we're able to click and we've got console log. So essentially what console log is, it actually gives you the ability to write out content within that console. So we had earlier mentioned that Google's DevTools is a really great way to go when you're developing your JavaScript and DevTools, you can just open that up. So either going by settings here, more tools, DevTools, or clicking that shortcut there. And uh, you're gonna start out on the elements tab. So click over to console. So mine is actually really big. So typically you can see all of them up here along the top. Uh, so the one that you're looking for for JavaScript is console. 
and this actually gives you a console to interact with the web page. So essentially the web page has loaded and now you have the ability to interact with whatever is going on in there. So basically that means that you can write some JavaScript so we can write console log and what console log does is essentially sends a message into our console and whatever message text string variable that we want to send in is just quoted in here. And when you click it, we see we get that message being returned. And there's also this callback, which we are gonna look at in more detail later on, and it is gonna make even more sense later on. But for now, uh, our simple JavaScript statement that we wanted to make within all of these in order to demonstrate how we can bring JavaScript into a simple HTML page is gonna be console log. So this is a built-in function within JavaScript that knows that when you specify console and log and whatever string value is here within this uh, rounded bracket is what actually gets output. So we've actually done the same thing within our code where we've added in console log there and we're just outputting hello. So basically what happens now that we've added as an attribute to our JavaScript, whenever we click the button, we get hello popping up there. And this is one of the ways to add JavaScript, although it's not very common and it's not very manageable. Uh, because basically what, mean, what this means is that if you have a whole bunch of HTML code and you want to make changes to your JavaScript, you've got to go over to the on click and make the changes here. So it's not really the best way to go about it uh, from a pr perspective if you want to build out uh, a really flexible web application. So the other way that you can do and add JavaScript is using the JavaScript tags. So these are script tags, opening and closing those script tags. And actually that should be a slash there. So opening and closing the script tags and then anything in here is gonna be rendered out. So let's, uh, let's uh, also we'll distinguish between this hello one. So hello two. And when you're writing JavaScript, uh, always close off the statement with the semicolon here. Uh, so this is how JavaScript knows that this is the end of that statement. And you can actually add additional statements as well within this type of format. But typically we're gonna put place them on the next line. And this is for readability sake so that the, the code gets uh, is more readable when you're looking at the source code. So let's go take a look at our page now, go back out and refresh it. So we see what's happening here is that as this web page is loading, our HTML loads, and just as the rest of the HTML, when it hits the script, it loads out that script content and uh, continues to load out the rest of the page, loading out that HTML. So a lot of times too that you'll see that sometimes the script tags are at the bottom just before the closing of body. And the reason for that is if you're relying on content that is be being loaded within your HTML and you wanna have access to uh, that content within your JavaScript, then you've gotta do it at the end because you want everything to load. Basically it's loading the page from the top down and you want all of that information that's loaded within the page object to be able to to be able to access it via JavaScript. So usually best practice is to place it at the bottom, uh, but again, you can also place it at the top and you can create uh, different functions, which we will be talking about later on, that can access the content within the web page at different points. So that was, uh, that was the second way of doing it and the most manageable and the best way to do it is to create a link to a source file. And to do this, it's really simple to do. I'm gonna create a brand new page. I'm gonna give this one a name. I'm gonna just call it script.js. So whatever JavaScript files, we got to give them an extension of JS and that way the browser also knows that this is a JavaScript file and now we're going to grab that and notice that we don't have to place any tags around here because this is just a strict JavaScript file and it will just render out whatever code is available there. And lastly, we just need to link to it. So where you link to it 
is going to be what point within the script rendering it's going to access that file and make use of the content of the file so if you're bringing in libraries and if you do have on-page uh, scripting per page uh, best practice is usually to place it on top and then have all of your on-page script below so there is also uh, occasions when you want to have this customized script here uh, so passing the script source here and linking to it gives you a really manageable file where you can make updates to script.js and if you've got it linked in 10 other pages or 100 other pages it doesn't matter it's always going to render out that script content so let's go take a look at our page now so we've got hello 3 which is being called from script.js hello 2 which is within the tags here and then this one is an event listener so whenever i click this button that's when we render out that those values so those are essentially the three ways that you can bring javascript into your web page and preferably uh, it's always better to separate out your scripting logic from your HTML just as we do with CSS where we try to pull all of that CSS out of our HTML and either link place it in a linked file or place it within the style tags so the same idea goes for JavaScript where we want all of uh, we want that separation of this coding the scripting from the rest of the presentation of the HTML.